man you just got done watching in that video who appears to be doing the thrust of freedom <laughs> goes by the name of Gary Snap Ferguson. But according to his profile on the Megan's Law website, he also goes by Arthur Paul Snap Ferguson, aka Gary G-A-R-R-Y Ferguson, aka Seth Neil Ferguson, and aka Gary S. Ferguson. That's right, Gary is a registered sex offender who is still currently teaching martial arts today. Gary was arrested on May 3rd, 2008 on 12 counts of sexual abuse. <coughs> Unfortunately, Gary took a plea deal and 10 of those charges were dropped. <laughs> he did, however, plead no contest to one felony count of molestation and a second count of engaging with two 15-year-old girls. He was quoted during the trial and saying, literally, I admit it, your honor. You sick bastard! Before Gary was a registered sex offender, however, he was a Maricopa police officer. Which is strange if you factor in his 1999 drug charge and his 2001 petty theft charge. Personally, that seems like a pretty big mistake to allow this dude with that kind of criminal background to be a police officer, but that's just me. Now, you would think somebody like this would had to have learned their lesson. And once they got out of prison, they would probably not dive right back into being around children again. But no, he went the opposite route and literally put himself back into a position where he was around children again. In a position of authority, mind you. And he went and helped out with kids classes over at Brian and Tax Kempo Karate. You're probably wondering who in their right mind would allow this guy around children. So I decided to reach out to Brian and see what he had to say about the entire thing. During that conversation, Brian let me know that there was no one by that name at his school, no children were in harm's way, never have been, never will be. Well, that's strange, because here's a photo of Brian and Gary at his school. I would also like to add, and by the way, I'm sure a lot of people would agree with me on this, that having a registered sex offender in classes around children is putting them in harm's way. His rebuttal? And your point is? This is pre-information on Gary, and clearly, no children. Okay, fair enough. There were no children in that photo, but there are children with Gary in this photo, and this one, and this one, and also this one with you standing right next to him. Also note that in this conversation, he says several times that this is all pre-information about Gary. All right. Let's play that game. That leaves two options. One, you yourself didn't know. That means you did not do a background check on someone that you allowed in your facility around your students who are children. Or two, you're simply lying. And I'm leaning towards two. Hell, you didn't even have to do a background check on this man. All you had to do was simply Google his name. Had you done that, you would have gotten all of Gary Snap Ferguson's greatest hits, such as... Cop accused of rape has multiple restraining orders, May 23rd, 2008. Former Maricopa cop admits to molestation, September 8th, 2008. Officer Gary Ferguson likes young girls, May 5th, 2008. Officer Ferguson's wife, Michelle Stans Fears, May 25th, 2008. But wait, there's more! He would have also seen this amazing mugshot, and as a bonus gift, he would have seen this video from May 25th, 2008. We have new information this evening on the police officer accused of having sex with three minors in Kings County. The officer worked in Kern County for the Maricopa Police Department, southwest of Bakersfield, off Highway 166. 29 Eyewitness News reporter Jose Gaspar has been following this story. He is here now with new details on how this case came to light. Jose. Lisa, apparently it was the officer's wife who told police in Hanford about her husband allegedly having had sex with three minors in Kings County some time ago. And because she went to police, the wife says she was forced to go into hiding. Speaking publicly for the first time, Michelle Ferguson says she had no idea what she and her children would face after going to police in Lemoore to tell them about her husband allegedly having sex with minors. We had to actually go into hiding. We've had to um, stay at motel rooms. Um, it was pretty scary. Her husband is 30-year-old Gary Ferguson, a Maricopa police officer. The alleged incidents happened as far back as 1998, 2003, and 2005, when the victims were 13, 14, and 15 years old. 
Ferguson was arrested and is now in jail in Kings County. Request for the TRO. We're asking for continuance. Michelle Ferguson is seeking a permanent restraining order against her husband. She says he threatened her several times at their home. Started messing with his duty weapon, sliding the, the, the hammer or the slider on it several times as I proceeded to go get the kids in the other room and he stopped me in the hallway and hid his hand behind a wall to make me believe he had a gun in his hand and um, told me he knew what he was going to do with it. Michelle Ferguson says what bothered her the most was her husband allegedly still having sex with minors and that's why she went to the police. You felt something had to be done. Yeah, I felt that there was going to end up being more people hurt. Married to Gary Ferguson for six years, Michelle says his behavior is a sort of compulsive disorder. It's just I feel he, he's got a problem as, as a type of addiction and I couldn't help him anymore, so maybe now he can get the help that he needs. We called Ferguson's lawyer in Fresno for a comment on this story, but our call has not yet been returned. Gary Ferguson can no longer serve as a police officer because a restraining order prohibits him from carrying a gun and therefore cannot perform his duties. There has also been this interesting screenshot that's been floating around of what appears to be a conversation between Brian and Gary. Gary, you're going to have to something to support me that I knew nothing about this. I've always had your back. I've always looked the other way. They're blowing this shit up all over TikTok, and now they're questioning that I didn't know about it. I don't know about you, but that seems a little fishy. When I showed him the first photo during our conversation of him and Gary standing together, he let me know that that photo was an old photo taken at their old location on Ming Avenue. So let's go down that path. On November 7th of 2021, on the Antax Facebook page, they posted about a grand opening which about that time is when they moved to their new facility. Well, that's strange because isn't this a video of Gary inside the new studio? I'm really excited to show you guys the new school, so I am going to show it to you guys right now. That video was taken inside the location that is currently being advertised not only on Google but also their website. And finally we have two photos here that were posted back in 2019 with what appears to be Gary with his face crudely scribbled out. Clearly it's a bald guy, clearly has the exact same arm tattoos as Gary. It's Gary. Which leaves us with one major question. If you moved in your new facility in 2001, and Gary was clearly taking a video inside that new facility, then why on earth would you scribble out his face way back in 2019 if you didn't know he was a registered sex offender? And no, you cannot go in after the fact of making a post and just scribble out his face. It doesn't give you the option to do that. Got he! <laughs> Not that long ago, I posted up about Gary on my Instagram page. I noted on that video, it's against Instagram and Facebook's policies and procedures for someone who is a registered sex offender to have an account with them. After we made that post, Gary's Facebook page is removed and one of his Instagram pages is removed. Now, of course, Gary has more than one Instagram account. Don't worry, I'll be reporting those as well. Unfortunately, Gary's TikTok and his YouTube are still up and doing just fine. It'd be a shame if people reported those. Now, we could sit here and dig into the multiple restraining orders that Gary had against him, but at the end of the day, I don't think we really need to dig into that. I think we know everything about Gary that we really need to know just based off the facts that are already out there for the world to see. It all boils down to this. Simply be diligent before you put your child into any martial arts program. Find out if the owner did local and federal background checks on anyone who's working around your children. Simply Google the person's name and maybe you'll find a little bit more information so that way you can make a more informed decision on where to put your child. Or, not even your child, possibly yourself. April will mark 11 years of doing McDojo life. 11 years of calling out frauds and cults and pedophiles and con artists. All of which are in the martial arts industry. So when it comes down to it, 
the whole purpose of doing this is to keep martial arts legitimate. And the only way we can do that is to make sure that the consumer base, before they go out into the world and they join a martial arts facility, is more educated. So the lesson learned here out of this video should be do your research before putting your child into a martial arts program. It's time to give these guys some Dillmans. This particular one I'm going to give to both Brian and Tack. And I'm going to give this one over to Gary Snap Ferguson at the same time. I'm giving them five out of five Dillmans. I know what you're thinking. Five out of five Dillmans. None of them did any magical chi voodoo powers. Why give them five? That's simple. Because I feel like allowing a registered sex offender around children is way, way, way worse, in my opinion, than people who believe they can knock people out with their mind. This brings us to the question of the day. What is advice that you would give someone if they were trying to find a legitimate martial arts studio? Be sure when you leave a comment in the comment sections of this particular video that you answer that question first, so that way I know that you watch the entire video. As always, thank you all for the likes, comments, shares, subscriptions, and all that other crap people online tell you to do. Keep the martial arts legit. My baby got rocked the other day by the generic. So she wanted to learn some new form of this self-defense. So she did her research and perused it online and found this tool said he could move shit with his mind. He called himself Sifu Paul Zimmerman. He got a dojo with a strip on your Cinnabon. Now she spends all day trying to break boards with her thoughts. But the only thing she's breaking is my little eyes.